Excellent. Welcome to the Evolution Church's live class. I am your facilitator tonight, Apostle Shazetta Morris, and you might be seeing this on many different pages or connections that, of course, you might be connected to us individually. You might be connected to the page. You might be connected to Coach Chi. You might be connected to some other groups that other individuals may be on. However you have connected to us tonight, welcome. We have our main audience that is on our Zoom platform. And so we are just facilitating a live from that particular aspect. And so we're going to attempt to do our very best to monitor the chats on our Zoom webinar platform and the chats that may come across on Facebook Live as well. Feel free to like and share. If you are on social media, you can do that easily by hitting that share button and inviting individuals to connect, they would need to join the page or at least have access to the page so that they can see, um, so that they can see the link. And then there's some workarounds around that too that I can't even get into at this moment, but you probably need to share this teaching so that individuals can hear some of the pieces that we're gonna release tonight. I am so grateful for all of our local partners. You all bless us on a continual basis. Thank you for being in community with us. We are the more valued by being in community with you. And so we have our sessions. Let me be our announcer tonight, right? We have our worship segments, the second and the fourth of every month. And so our next worship segment is, I usually have the date. I usually, it's August 14th and August 28th. So August 14th and August 28th. So let's see, somebody said that the chat was disabled. I don't know why. You should be able to see it, let's see. Can you see this? Sometimes it does that if you are on the phone. And I knew that happened before everyone. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Okay, so we updated the, um, we updated some of the settings. You all respond back and let me know if you are able to chat in and see some responses. Yes, I'm seeing people respond. Thank you for mentioning that because I did not know. It must be something that they're doing automatically on the Zoom side now so that we don't get to see that until somebody mentions it. So thank you for saying that. So again, going back to our service schedule, we gather locally, collectively, um, on the second and fourth Sundays of every month at 3 p.m. So our next gathering is going to be August 14th and August, what did I say? I lost those dates so quick. That's what distraction will do to you, right? August 14th and August 28th of this month, August 14th and August 28th. So if you're local to the Homestead area, please join us. We will be at the Hampton Inns and Suites. It is off of exit two. You can see it right off of the highway of the Florida Turnpike. Easy on, easy off, easy access. So please do that. And then every Tuesday night, we jump on here in order to do a sharing, a teaching, which we entitle Life Class. Life Class is our teaching tool that we use to empower individuals from a aspect of um, teaching all things pertaining to life and godliness. That is our premise. We use the scriptures in order to inform our advancement, but we also use other sacred texts in order to bring a balanced point of view as it relates to the things that pertain to godliness and the things that pertain to life. So you will receive the preached word you will also receive, and is just as important as the preached word, the inspirational message that will help you navigate through the daily realities of your life. We bring together everything that we are encompassed with, our profession, our spiritual leadership, our daily walk as people, individuals who or just human, our regional perspective, our global insight, all of that comes to the table when we share in life class. And so we do that every Tuesday. So we always wanna make sure that everyone is aware of that. 
we want you to know that you can catch us here on Tuesday evenings, either on the webinar platform and on the live, on the live social media platform. Oftentimes we don't always go live. Every now and again, I get an inspiration to go live. I'm not a necessarily a social media person, but I will do what is necessary in order to get the message or the word across or broaden our audience so that other individuals can have connection to what it is that we're doing. So by any means necessary, right? So tonight was one of those nights where I felt that this teaching needed to go across platforms. I wanted to make sure that we hit both spaces. Robin, we see you, thank you for joining. And if you wouldn't mind, make sure that you share with some other individuals. I believe that you in particular and some other individuals are going to love this teaching tonight. So share, share, share as much as you can. Vicki, we see you on the webinar side. God bless you to all of you that are on the webinar side. Miss Malika, my husband is over there. Mr. Armand, you know, I'm always excited to see him. I'm just grateful for all of you all participating. Let's get into this. And for those of you that will watch this, you're watching it currently with us, or you will watch it later. We welcome your contributions. We are not just an organization that has church services, but our three dimensions to focus on the empowerment of humanity and move our move move or help move humanity forward we focus on three distinct spaces in our organization we focus on the spiritual aspect of man the mental health awareness of man and then creative arts engagement of man those three streams um, speak to body soul spirit energetic engagement creative inventions creative and witty inventions that keep you moving in the land relating to other individuals exporting what we have received from heaven into the earth realm um, mental health deals with the soul um, because we all understand that there is a challenge that we have spent a lot of time in spiritual awareness but not a lot of time in the soul space and one of my favorite statements that I hold to and hold dear was that if we are going to follow Jesus in his entirety, we've got to first understand that Jesus was God and Jesus was man. And there was a reason why he shared that and showed that model of example before us in order to walk it out. I believe that there is power in the blend. And if we deny one, we end up crippling the other. And we don't want to do that. We want to be supernatural we want to be spiritual and human we understand that we are um, spiritual beings having a human experience but we don't want to demonize the human experience just because we consider it the lesser part of um, the priority on god's mind it is not true and it is not so there is a reason why we experience what we experience and why he modeled that in front of us and if you ever got questions or you have want to have more communication or conversation around that reach out to us. We talk about these things with our community and our tribe on a continual basis. And it is making impact in their life and in their world. And we want to make sure that that does that. The greatest example of the spirit of God's presence, pressure, and power in our life is when we allow him to move through our human experience we are the hands of spirit and we exercise that space to navigate, govern, assume and assign that which God has given to us to do. And we take that in every facet, not just the church facet. We take possession of that idea. We take it seriously. We do not waste that as a resource. And we want to make sure that everyone is empowered with that space. So tonight, this particular teaching, it's been, it's been really working with me over the last two days. And it's probably a theme of mine, I know, um, when it comes to talking about gifts and graces and value systems. And my profession in the mental health field has added so much to my natural spiritual ability to explore this space that I wanted to take some additional time tonight over the next few minutes to really just kind of walk through some particular things, simple principles that I think we often miss, or we just apply it to the hype of a story and not see it drilled down in us as a principle that will continue to live. 
So let me share this screen. I will be back and forth with you. Bear with me as we walk through this teaching. Where are we? Yep. We're going back to this. Yes, so tonight's teaching, we are talking about bring what you got. And I know that that's bad English. Bear with me. I am a, um, <laughs> I, I've got upper graduate degree, so bear with me. I intended to say this just like this. And if you're typing and repeating and doing any of that, I want you to say that to yourself. Bring what you got. Bring what you got. What I'm, what I'm really, really going to I want to deal with it in certain levels and it's going to take a couple of weeks to do that. But oftentimes we are experiencing trying to relate to other individuals and we come into community and we haven't really, a lot of people haven't really carved out the value of community and what that all is supposed to mean and bring to us as people. You know, we show up and we assume that we're the brightest light in the room. But the reality is, is that your light is just as equal as my light. My light, however, might just have a different flair than your light, but we're all light. And it is until we get that idea in our conscious as we move in community, we will not we will not be able to remove the whole idea of personality driven organizations until we understand that everybody brings values yeah somebody say that i bring value i bring value and we're 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 carving out this thing that makes everyone understand that their value what they bring is important you've got to bring what you've got to the table and only what you have is what you can bring now over the course of weeks we have talked about different gifts and graces those things that we're naturally born with that god gives us naturally we don't have to think about doing it it's just something that we do and it is a part of our natural effervescence it's a part of our natural being you know i i could do certain things with my eyes closed it's that nature um, that we talk about gifts. And so even when the scriptures say gifts come without repentance, if there is nothing that you can do that would qualify you to have received the natural gifts that are a part of who you are along with the gift of salvation. But let's talk about those natural abilities that may be heightened in you and not in other individuals. We're talking about gifts like singing, gifts like um, being able to speak well, gifts like running or being athletic, gifts like writing poetry and those things that are natural to you that take no effort. I think a couple of weeks ago I did a teaching here and we were talking about those things that don't take any effort, but we also talked about characteristics that after a while you develop in order to expand the capacity of your gifts. It doesn't make your gift better, but it makes your gift credible. See, characteristics will allow you to be able to manage things because of your gift that will make you, um, not necessarily qualified, but credible in front of people. For instance, those disciplines, when we talk about managing and management, we talk about those disciplines that will allow people to embrace you that will allow people to trust you you become a person that you know honors your word you you live in that management that what you say you're going to do as you are growing and grooming yourself in you know honing your skill and honing your gift it is that management that allows people to trust us, what you will do with your gift, not just love your gift, right? So if you were in that teaching, it was an exciting space because I think blending those two understandings, some, some kind of way in our world, we have this thing that just kind of swings the pendulum. We're always swinging from one side to the other it's almost as if in one season well if i'm gifted that's all that i need and the reality is is that that's a partial truth but then on the other side when someone says well if i'm if i'm managing things even if i'm not as gifted you know that's all i need and that's a partial truth because we want every skill we want your gift to be maximized so if you have a skill if you have a gift we want you to the management required 
is for you to sharpen what you are gifted in so that you can have an expanded space of reach, right? We don't have to swing the pen, the pendulum we have to really walk almost like walking the middle i qualify this just as much as i qualify this and so that blend makes us who we are it makes us um palatable to walking in different systems i can be in the pulpit and the boardroom i can be in my office working with one individual or speaking to 500 individuals while i am working with the one individual i'm practicing my language so that i can speak to the 500 you see there is this thing that requires us to have balance. So when I know that I'm gifted and I know that God has called me to do something specific, oftentimes it will show through your natural gifts. And so the reason why this teaching is important is because I need to start, I want to emphasize, and again, for many of you, if you've been around me for any number of years, this information is probably not going to be new for you, but I want to bring more emphasis to it because this day and age is proving how important it is for you to have a strong sense of self-value. Value is a huge, self-value in particular is a huge challenge for the human condition right now, specifically now, because there is so much comparison that is visual. So right now in our world for individuals who are, are visualizers, who learn by visualization um, predominantly, they are loving this social media platform, right? Where you can, at the, at the click of, you know, a thumb or at the click of a button, you can see this video, this video, that video, this video you can hear this person singing that person singing you can hear this person speaking everyone is coming up with new ways and tactics on how to develop new programs sing this in a better way um you know speak to certain things in different ways and there's a plethora of information out there that will give you information but self-value comes into play because when we are exposing ourselves to this on a consistent basis when you do this to yourself without securing who you are it will challenge how you see yourself let me say that again when you expose yourself to a whole bunch of stimuluses that you can see that you can hear that you can watch the challenge with it, because again, it's a tool, it's nothing wrong with it, but the challenge comes in is when you haven't secured your own sense of self, it becomes a challenge for you because you begin to now compare yourself to all of the visualization that you see. And that becomes a strong, um, a, a, a strong trigger towards self-identity challenges, depressions, anxieties, all of these things that will impact how you see yourself. So I want you to really consider it because here is what individuals are finding themselves doing. The ratios today are significant around people being depressed, people having anxiety, younger individuals killing themselves because they don't have a strong sense of self while they're being flooded with all of these comparative things that allow themselves to compare themselves against the rest of the world. Now, while again, this tool is amazing because it connects people to different parts of the world. You can be friends with somebody in Korea while you're living in Pennsylvania, right? All of that is very valid and it's very relevant. It is the progression of life. It is the progression of technology. It's supposed to happen, right? The thing that has happened though, is that while the world and while technology is progressing, we have not 
secured our self-value space. And instead of spending time doing that, we've allowed that sleeping dog to lie. And now that we're in this technology thrust and we have access to all of these things, that thing is now saying, oh God, you know what? If I try to do this, then um, you know, I'm not like them. And so I don't have what it takes or, you know, I can't sing like they sing or I can't dance like they dance. The, the whole reality of all of this exposure ends up making us confused about who we are because we have not secured our own sense of self value. When we don't secure that space, we live in an altered existence. That altered existence occurs when we don't embrace our own value. Altered existence means that you will attempt to be someone that you're not because you like what you see externally. Yes, you will try to be altered someone that you're not because of what you see externally. So instead of you paying attention to and even validating your own sense of self, your own inner child, your own value system, your own gifts, maximizing that, fortifying it. Here's another word, appreciating it. We go into this external observation of, well, my body doesn't look like this. And so I would never make the cut here. Or, you know, I don't do this this way. So I'll never make this cut here. We spend so much time observing all of the stimuli that is coming into us, but we have failed to pay attention to the value of the gifts that we are and that we have been given appreciation my goodness, has got to be one of the strongest things that we come to live in. Self-value and paying attention to yourself is not an isolating issue. It is really you attempting to learn how to manage, appreciate, love who you are and what you bring to a table. Otherwise, you will always be seeking something outside of you seeking to fit into something that is not necessarily for you but because it is more normal to you or it is most popular to you you will try to fit into a space that can't even really accommodate you but you'll do it because you don't have a sense of self value so you gotta ask yourself these questions you wonder why you're not producing fruit in a particular area you got to ask yourself that because if you are gifted in a space, but you're not producing fruit, you've got to ask yourself, am I doing this the way that I've been designed to do it? Or am I doing this the way that somebody has tried to shape me into doing it? Right? The next question you've got to ask yourself is one that you should wonder why individuals are successful in an area that is a huge struggle for you. See, now that in itself can deal with your gift sets, and what you assume you should be doing versus what you really should be doing. So when you don't have a, a strong sense of yourself, you will try to place yourself in spaces that are not you because it looks like somebody gets more attention in that area. And so we are driven by attention. Attention seeking is not necessary a bad thing. Hear what I'm saying. Affirmation is something that every human needs. That's why you need to really consider being in the right community where no one is bigger or smaller than the other, but everybody equally responds to what a person brings to the table. You don't have to um, try to draw attention more than what you um, more than what you already bring. You can be just as um, normalized in a situation because you don't have to change who you are. You can just be who you are. You don't have to consider, am I enough? Am I too much? Am I, you know, out of sync, out of balance? When you're in the right community, who you are is already valued already. So if you've got those questions and if you're considering those two particular questions in this slide, you need to consider your own value of your own self. You need to be able to say to yourself as an added mantra, I add value. God, thank you for waking me up this morning. And I know that because I have life, I have value. And wherever I go, I'm bringing value to the situation. And the situation is bringing value to me. It's not just one-sided, but you have to approach 
approach every situation with the idea that you are bringing value to it because you know that you are valuable. Okay. I'm taking this, I'm pacing this as slowly as possible so that I can grab any questions as I'm seeing them both on social media and in the webinar chat. So I am watching and listening for everything that you're sharing. This next slide suggests this, that self-value is the gasoline for confidence. How you believe about yourself is the catalyst of what you execute for yourself. I will read that again more slowly. How you believe about yourself is the catalyst of what you execute for yourself. When you believe a thing, you are more prone to move in that thing confidently and with assurance. Now, that that thing or that skill set or what you're bringing to the table in this particular season of time can be strong because you've done it. For instance, I've been an administrator for a long time. Right. And so I know that if I show up to a situation, more than likely the administrator in me, if there is a need, will respond to that need. OK, I believe that I am a strong administrator. I know that I have strong skills. I know that they've been refined. I know that I have been adjustable over years. And so I pretty much have a good level of confidence as it relates to that. So because I believe that when somebody comes to me with a scenario or a situation, the administrator in me typically responds with some level of solution because that administrator has been in practice for some time now. So how you believe about yourself is the catalyst of what you execute for yourself. And you've got to be first partaker of what you now know you are skilled and gifted to do. The day is ending where people are going to have enough energy to inspire themselves and keep inspiring you. Yeah, that was good. I'll say it again. The day is ending when people are going to have enough energy to inspire themselves and inspire you. There was a day where we were throwing anchors to people saying, come on, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. But what has happened is, is that there are individuals, those individuals that are throwing those same lifelines are drowning with individuals who refuse to pay attention to themselves. Hear what I'm saying to you. Your self value is going to build your faith value. I know that you think it's opposite, but it's not. The only way that you're going to increase your faith and believe the God that you say you serve is to believe that he had enough thought about you to give you gifts, to give you promise, to give you hope, and to give you a future. Otherwise, you are serving him in vain. What is the point of you believing in a God that cannot, that you can't really see your own value in. How you believe about yourself is the catalyst of what you execute for yourself. So whether it is something that God has specifically spoken to you, you can believe God, but you also have to believe you. Your inability to see you, listen, is the only blockage to your complete expansion into what you accomplish. So thoughts manifest things. You can say a thing all day long. You could speak the right words, but if you're thinking the incorrect words, you're in conflict with self. And we know that words are like frequency and they have their own energy. And the conflict is not going to manifest anything until you solidify what side or position you're going to be in when you're in your thoughts. Self-value is your gas. What you do and how you do it is all determined by your value of it. You can acknowledge a diamond ring as valuable, but you won't acknowledge you as the diamond valuable. You can acknowledge a Mercedes as valuable, but you can't acknowledge you who drives the Mercedes as valuable. Come on. You've got to consider that before all of these things came, you were here. And, and, and here's the thing. Somebody can, um, somebody can fight me on this and it's okay. If I was giving out gifts that you didn't appreciate, how do you think I would feel? 
Let me pose this to you, parents, anybody who is listening or watching this video. If you give your kids gifts that they don't value, how do you feel? Imagine God giving us, inserting into us gifts that we don't value. You're the gift and in you is many other gifts, talents, appropriations, all of those things that he wants you to accomplish, but you don't value it enough to dig at it, to put pressure on it, to expose it, to manifest it. You don't value it enough to bring it to light. Someone would say, well, I really do value it, but I don't know how to do it. Well, then to me, again, it speaks to self-value because if you can see that it's there, but you won't go after what it takes in order to refine that, then that is still considered a lack of value. Somebody else might say, well, I value it, but sometimes I just don't have, you know, the energy or the, the wherewithal or I'm depressed around how I feel or all of that. Here's what I would say to you, go and get some assistance around your depression. Let's deal with those things that are keeping you from seeing who you are so that we can lift this cloud and get you on the road to manifesting. At the end of the day, whatever the reason <laughs> as to why you're not manifesting, the reason comes back to you and how you think about your value. Because if you valued yourself enough, you would go and find out what's going on with you so that you could feel better about yourself, so that you could manifest all that you have been created to manifest. Everything will come back to you. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as valuable enough in order to be well? Do you see yourself as valuable enough in order to be made whole? Or will we end up like the, the man who was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years and just kept saying, nobody was here to throw me in. I promise you for 38 years, somebody has been close enough to be an anchor for that man to get him almost close to or connected to this pool. But when Jesus comes, according to that scripture, I believe it's in John 5, there is a mind shift. So much so that even the technology of the troubling of the water changed. And the reality was, is that the man didn't even need the water. He needed a change in his mindset. Here's the thing with that, people of God, beloved, all of you. When we are seeking quick and easy fixes, gratifications that will settle us for the moment. Two weeks later, you will find yourself in an emotional hole again. Why? Because the fast fix does not fix anything. It just appeases us and gets us through the moment. My goodness. It gets us through the moment. And it's only most like it is as an addiction. If I can settle what I'm feeling right now, then I'll be good. And then two weeks later, you'll be back at the same space. Why? Because until you deal with the root cause, which is your value system, your belief system, how you think about yourself will equate to how you handle and value others. Here's another thing that I'll say about this. I know that you think that you are valuing other people more than you are valuing yourself, but here's the truth. As you are assisting other individuals, there is a part of you that is resenting why you are not able to move like they move. Listen, we can prove that we can prove the case all day long. That will be a conversation that I can have and continue to have with you because as we are helping people and watching people, have you ever helped somebody and watch them expand and explode? And then all of a sudden in a private corner, you say, well, dang, all that information they got was from me. <laughs> you start resenting subtly how somebody has used what you have in order to expand their reach, but you haven't been able to do it for yourself. That is a self-value issue. So here's a question. I hope y'all still here because I know this thing is good. I want you to be thinking about it. If your throat is dry, get you some water. You need to consider what thoughts do I have about myself that don't allow my progression. That's a good one.
That's a good one. See, when you have these kinds of thoughts, you have to be honest with yourself. Why am I trying to run away from this thing here? That's going on. Why am I always avoiding it? What thoughts do I have about myself that don't allow my progression? Next question. What am I doing to work through that so that I don't remain stuck? I'm telling you everything that is a challenge for you comes back to you. You are the way in it and you are the way out of it. Why do I say that? You won't say, Apostle, you won't say that God is the way out of it? No, because he's already empowered you with everything that you need in order to determine. He gave you a thinking mind. The scripture says in Genesis that when he breathed into our nostrils, he, we became living souls. His breath is ever existing. It is creating our mind consciousness continuously. It's renewing our thoughts. It's a Allowing us to consider and see more solutions or if not within ourselves, connect with other individuals that can help us see solutions. When we remain stuck, it is a subconscious but very intentional stage because there's no reason for you to be stuck. Number one, there's too many resources in the earth that won't allow you to be stuck. You've got physical physicians that'll help you with your body. You've got mental physicians that'll help you with your soul. You've got entrepreneurship that'll help you with your businesses. There is this demand and the earth is releasing all of these resources that people now have to draw from. I can't make you drink the water, but the water is there. You got to see, you've got to see that there is so much access now than there has been in times past. And you've got to consider why am I not reaching for what it is that I've been promised by God to manifest and then go after digging out what is hindering you. We put now the responsibility on mankind and stop blaming God for doing our work. Yeah, I know that's, I know that's a little painful, but God is not, does not have to do another thing as long as we are living in the land and he has passed the baton and said, listen, I've given you this land. I've put you in this earth. You are God agents of the earth. Now you do this work. Yeah. <laughs> yep. David and his rocks, the principle. Let's read this scripture and I'm going to be almost done. First Samuel 17. This thing blessed me so today. It did. 17 verse 39. You've got to read the whole scripture. I don't have time to do it tonight, but I'm going to be tackling this topic tonight from the individual perspective. Next week, probably from the communal perspective, because now as we understand our responsibility as individuals, what the appropriate community now does with individuals who bring what they've got to the table. If you've been in church any length of time, you know the story. If you've been a scholar of the scriptures, you know the story. This is the story of David and Goliath and that experience. Right? Verse 39 says it like this. Let me jump up though to 34 and I'm going to read it for you. And David said to Saul, your servant kept his father's sheep. I'm in the Amplified Bible. And when there came a lion or again a bear and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and smote it and delivered the lamb out of its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and smote it and killed it. Verse 36 says, your servant killed both the lion and the bear and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. For he has defied the, the armies of the living God. Verse 37 says, David said, the Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. 38 says, then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put on 
He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. Verse 39 says, and David girded his sword, his sword over his armor. Then he tried to go, but could not, for he was not used to it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, <laughs> for I am not used to them. And David took them off. Verse 40 says, then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's lunch bag, a whole kid's skin slung from his shoulder in his pouch. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. Verse 41 says, the Philistine came on and drew near to David, the man who bore the shield going before him. I'll stop here because we know if you've been in the scriptures long enough, you know that David killed Goliath. But David killed Goliath with what he was used to using. In the beginning of this or in, the, in verse 34, the scripture talks about David going out he was a shepherd and he goes out to meet his brothers who were on the front line of battle and he was listening to what everybody was saying about goliath he was also listening to what goliath was saying about the armies of the lord and david in his zeal because he was a young man the scripture says he was questioning his brother about what they were going to do and Eli his brother got annoyed with him and so David stopped talking to him went to someone else another soldier who told him the same thing David got boastful it wasn't a bad boast he says listen I've got experience in this particular field right and he starts to list his resume of things that he had already done as a shepherd he didn't just list his resume, he talked about the value of what he did because of who he was, but he also talked about the value of the armies of the Lord, the value of God's word, God speaking this defeat, and then David saying about himself, everything that he was qualified to do and everything that he brought to the table, which made him be confident in the fact that he could kill Goliath. <laughs> so, of course, Saul sees him and says, listen, if you want to do it, then God be with you, but you're going to have to dress like this. And he proceeds to put on David everything that he assumes he will need in order to fight this giant. But David soon recognizes that what Saul puts on him is not suitable for him to fight. Man, I tell you, I've been in these scriptures for years, but today it was a huge reminder of a position that I needed to be in myself, but it blessed me again because this thing about perspective, perspective about who you are leads to what you can do. David had a clear and zealous perspective about his ability his gifting. He was a man, the scriptures say, he was a man of war. David was probably fighting until he couldn't fight anymore, right? So David was a man of war. We understand that in David's progression, he started out killing animals in order to protect sheep. He graduates and starts handling the armies of the Lord. He becomes a captain. He also graduates graduates from there and is also entrusted not to fight because his character is being developed now where he now has to restrain himself. And I'll get to that in another two weeks or so. My goodness. But the same skill, the same gift, the same person, although progressing through different seasons, never once denounced who he was or who he was gifted to be. And that perspective led him or made him or named him not just a man after God's own heart, but a man who was fit or made for war. When people heard David's name, they knew that he was a man of war. Okay. His perspective about himself in this scripture was 
everything because he was confident in who he was. He was confident in his experience, which allowed him to be able to do what he did. A blurred perspective will cause you to put on items that would not serve the purpose for your being. Listen to me. There are things in the, in the land right now that may look popular, but they are not for you. There are things and people, proprietors, businesses, organizations, singers, all of these things that people are doing that may not be suited for you. So while they are receiving notoriety because of how they do it, it is not suited for you. You will not step into somebody else's armor and then receive the same type of recognition that they receive because that, that armor is suited for them. It could look a certain way, even may feel more acceptable to others that are used to seeing it a certain way, but it would never allow you to function in it like someone else would. This scripture here is a strong principle, and I, I love what David did. He, he tried it on because... His, at the time, king said, this is what you should do. But David paused after trying it on and recognized that this would not work for him. Listen, and so in this day and age that we live in, there are times where people are trying to shape you for what they may understand and know. That's why coaching may be important or mentoring may be important. But what I know about coaching as a coach, what I know about counseling as a counselor, and what I know about mentoring as a mentor is that it is important for you to empower the person to be their best self and not to be another image or version of you. David had the ability to recognize that what I'm putting on is not suited or fitted for me. And so let me take it off and go back to what I am used to doing. Listen, that's a strong sense of self-value because David could have gotten discouraged because Saul's armor didn't fit. But instead he said to himself, I don't know about Saul's armor, but I know what got me through when it was the sheep and the bear in the field. So let me go back to what I know about me. Yeah, let me use what I'll use or what I have used for me because it has worked before. My goodness, and in this situation, with the help of the Lord and the power of his wisdom, it's going to help me defeat this lion or this giant right here in front of us. Your only goal is to align with your own skill set so that you can understand the assignment for your own life. I will read that again, that you should say your. Your only goal is to align with your own skill set so that you can understand the assignment for your life. If you do anything else outside of aligning with who you are, then you will never register or recognize the value of who you are in any situation or in any condition. You will try, you will try to alter your space in order to be someone else because they receive a type of recognition that you desire to have. But instead of trying to assume somebody else's glow, why don't you assume and work on the very thing that is keeping you from glowing yourself? Every one of us have an individual glow. Every one of us have a space that God has possessed positioned us to be in. There doesn't have to be any level of repetition as long as humanity is existing. We may even do the same things, but we won't do them the same way. What I need from you is not another me. What I need from you is the fullest sense of you. And every other person that experiences you needs the fullest sense of you in their life. Otherwise, we're going to spend time with counterfeits and individuals that have no sense of self. You know what that's called to me? That's called a zombie. Individuals that have a strong sense of self 
can now come into corporate community and have a greater communal experience. And see, I'm telling you now, the reason why this teardown of organizations, every system is being challenged right now. The reason why this teardown is so significant, this is just my opinion. The reason why this teardown is so significant is because there is a restructuring that is going on that is going to make every crooked place straight and every rough place plain. The high places will be made low and the low places will be raised to equal playing field. There is a diversity and a blendedness that is coming into our world and every system that continues to try to live in a state where the personality of one is still greater than the personality of the many, the system is come, is going to fold. The system as we know it today is like a house of cards, my God. And it is imploding in on itself. Hear me, I'm telling you, what you're watching right now is not the demise of just um, people, 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 listen, th these are the things that we will say. People are hating on my glow. People are doing this. They just don't like what I'm doing. They hating on me. They doing this. They doing that. Mm -mm. That's not what's happening. You know what's happening? There is an attention to this idea that makes us want to be so individual that we cannot commit to community in order to save the entire space of humanity. Listen to what I'm saying. There is a fabric that God is bringing all of his people back to. People in church, people out of church, people in storefronts, people in cathedrals, people in huts or tents or people on the corners. There is a fabric that he is bringing humanity back to and every system is going through reparations right now. Everything is being shifted because what we have denied in one is get ready to be released in that same one. The tables turn, but we're not looking at new, new single personalities. We're going to see now grassroots communities raising up like they've never raised up before. We're going to see the organization of millions of people speaking at, as one voice now. Now versus just one person influencing the masses with this whole idea of manipulation. Listen, that system is folding in on itself. And it behooves, yes, I'll use my husband's word. It behooves all of us to really evaluate, not for the sake of trying to hype yourself up, because we all need daily affirmations, right? We need to speak to ourselves so that we get to relearn the voice that is within us. Yes, I advocate for that. But your self-value is now bringing you into what we will talk about again next week. The reality of how you now can actively serve in corporate community. And I don't mean serving where you're being used. I'm talking about actively aligning with your region, actively aligning with your locality, actively aligning with the people group, actively aligning with your neighborhood in order to serve the purpose of God where you are placed at the moment. These things are changing I'm telling you, and they're changing intentionally. It is what we call universal correction. Almost as if God is transferring his hands and saying, no, nah, this has been at its high place long enough. I'm leveling the playing field. And if you don't have a good sense of yourself in the particular seasons that you're in, because seasons will change and we'll talk about that too. If you don't have a good sense of yourself, you will always be seeking for some level of affirmation or validation by external forces when the reality is you need to be able to speak over yourself, encourage yourself. You know what that really is? You remind yourself. You pull out of yourself. 
who you are, what you are, why you are, and where you are based off of what God has communicated is the purpose of why you even exist. Yeah. You've got to be able to bring what you've got. So here's the question and I'm going to get off here. I wonder what is in your arsenal that you don't have value for today. Can you even imagine that that is the very thing or things that God wants to bring to light, that God wants to use and navigate in the areas that you live in, but you discount its worth. You discount its value. You discount who you are because you don't sound, sing, dance, walk, talk, speak like the next man. If you recognize that these are areas of deficiency, then what are you doing in order to make yourself whole? Or are you comfortable with the cycles of highs and lows that keep you questioning your own level of existence? Why am I here? What am I here for? And then we ultimately get to the point where we say, I no longer want to live. No. Mm -mm. No, you haven't considered yourself value. You haven't considered that you are the solution even in your own, own crises. You haven't considered that because what you bring is not valuable to you first. Lord, help us tonight. Help us with all of the grace that we've been given and all of the gifts that we've received that we have an appreciation of who we are, what we are, why we are, what we bring, what we have, and we'll value it first so that we no longer allow other individuals to diminish our value as if they have the monopoly on if we're valuable or not. No one can determine your value but you. We allow people to set us in a valuable or invaluable space. And as soon as we allow that, when they change their mind, we are depressed because we haven't paid enough attention to ourself. This same David that was zealous killed this giant. <laughs> when everybody else was afraid of him because he knew who he was in that season. I want to challenge you to spend more time exploring yourself. I know social media is fun. We on social media right now, right? <laughs> we get loads of information and that information is wonderful, but it is nothing to us. If we don't know how to properly assimilate it in the different facets of our life, our mind, our soul and our spirit. So let's get back to first things first, self value. What I bring is what God gave me and what he gave me is awesome. I value it. I will learn how to appreciate it. I will bring that to the table and only that. And whatever I don't have, I'm not supposed to have because what I do have has been gifted to me by God which makes it good. Yeah, I want you to ponder on that. Next week, we're gonna talk about how this applies in the communities that we serve in, whether it's a church community, whether it is our neighborhood community, whether it is our good sisterhood club, whether it is our choir community, whatever it is, because who you are showing up as is impacting the communities that you're in. And sometimes it is that very lack of self value that is causing all of the controversy that we see. And I want to speak to it. Yeah. Listen, if you've got comments, thoughts, if you watch this video, as you watch this video, when you watch this video later, 
If you've got comments, I'm going to be checking for it. If you're on Zoom webinar now with us, I'm going to labor here for a few minutes and get your questions, get your thoughts, get your comments. I want to hear what you're saying. For those of you that are on social media, we would love your contributions and your support because we are an organization that does a lot of things. Check out our website, www.theevolutionchurchsoflow.org and partner with us. If you desire to be connected to what we're doing, even from another state, we have a pathway for you to do that. If you are local to Homestead, we would love to have you partner with us locally here and work on some of the initiatives that are that is allowing us to impact our community. But we believe in community and we would love to work with you as you work with us. Yep. So we're getting off of social media now. You all have a great evening. Those of you that are on the webinar chat, stay on. I want to get your questions and your comments before we disconnect tonight. And you all be blessed. Yeah, those of you that are on the webinar, if you've got any questions, thoughts, concerns, the chat was a little quiet tonight, but I'm assuming that everybody was listening thinking, commenting, Malika, I'm watching her comments now, and she was commenting, few words, but here we are. So if you've got any thoughts as it relates to what it is that we are sharing tonight, I definitely want to hear from you. You, at the end of the day, are the most valuable commodity. What you do is not more significant than who you are. You've got to know that. You've got to know that in context. You've got to understand that. In reality, that your greatest assignment, your greatest focus has got to be on you developing the gift that you are. Value there is greater than money. You will always be able to attract what you need when you understand the value of you. Yeah, when you understand the value of you. You will be able to attract what you need. You'll be able to hear the necessity of those resources and know what to do, know how to navigate, know how to react, know how to respond. Even your talent, the one talent that you bring emphasis to is not the only talent that you have. I want to challenge you, all of you that are connected to our community tonight. I want to challenge you to explore more of yourself so that you can maximize this thing called life and see what kind of experience that God will give you as you begin to expand your territory. When they talk about that prayer, the prayer of Jabez, enlarging your tents, who do you think is being enlarged? It's not giving you more land or property. You are the thing that's being more enlarged. You are being stretched. So that you can live out this greater life experience. Take the challenge. Take the challenge. Take the challenge to be more, to maximize more of yourself. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> We're going to disconnect. It's 807. See, we did good tonight with time. We're so grateful to all of you for joining us and we will post this teaching to the YouTube channel. You can review it at your leisure. Let it bless you. Let it inspire you. Let it encourage you. Let it preach to you so that you can be in an expanded space in your life. Have a great night. God bless all of you. And we will see you next week.